ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸುಚಿರಾಜ್ಞಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೂರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಟುಡೇ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಭಾ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಭಾ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ನಿಯಮ ನಿಶ್ಚಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾಕ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ವಚನಾಮೃತ್ ಗರುಡ ಮಧ್ಯ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ I do not want to read the whole Vajnamrut because every day we are reading one chapter of the Vajnamrut. I think you all of the listeners also read the Vajnamrut every day. So today we are not going to read the Vajnamrut Garada 2nd 61. But through the presentation we are trying to grasp something. from this vachanamrut what maharaj wanted to say us like what maharaj desire from us because in this vachanamrut sri ji maharaj himself had said he himself described a category or a characteristics for a person who is dear to him who is a staunch devotee according to him otherwise in general sense in the satsang we most likely feel ourselves like we are a satsangi we are a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but in reality we are not a perfect devotee according to sri ji maharaj view so now if we want to reserve our name in the heart of maharaj and pujya guru ji meaning in the, in the heart of satpurush then we must live according to this vachanamrut and to this vachanamrut sri ji maharaj himself says take a look inside the presentation we are going to discuss about staunch devotee and the great devotee because in this vachanamrut sri ji maharaj himself had described the characteristic of a staunch devotee as well as later on he had also described the someone who is a devotee and he is called or he is uh, is worthy uh, being worshiped as par great devotee so in this vachanamrut we are going to learn about these two devotees as well as niyam nischay and pax the three foremost qualities of a devotee next in this vachanam first and foremost sri ji maharaj said a person who possesses three attributes can be called a staunch satsangi and those three attributes first one the first is to strictly adhere to the niyams prescribed by one sishta dev second is to have extremely firm faith in god and third is to be loyal to those vaisnav devotees who worship once is to dev so first one is niyams second one is faith in god and third one is loyalty towards the towards someone who is worshiping bhagwan so first one to strictly adhere to the niyams prescribed by once is to dev so this is the very basic and very fundamental principle or the attributes we have to achieve in our life why because this is very simple not anything uh, like very hard to uh, follow or nothing we have uh, all of our niyams sri ji maharaj had prescribed in the shiksha patri and the uh, vachanamrut we can say and also we have the other scriptures or the kirtans or 
our daily rituals also suggest us to do something and not to do something so in this way we have uh not too much but we have a very little amount of niyams in our life to follow so if we follow all of those niyams strictly then maharaj will be pleased upon us and according to maharaj views for a devotee we if we follow these three attributes if we achieve the, these three attributes in our life then we are said to be a stone satsang according to maharaj otherwise if we are like doing tilak chandlo and we are doing puja and that's it nothing do uh, not following niyams and nothing then by our outer appearance everyone those in the satsang as well as the outsiders they also understand understand us as a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but maharaj and satpurush they will never understand us as stone satsangi and maharaj and mota purush they wanted us to uh make us a stone satsangi because the kantik satpurush they have only one vision which is also described in the vachanamrit grada for 67 that he always think for whoever come to him he always think for those people like this person is uh remain in my company then he must be enjoy the real bliss and enjoyment which is in the akshardham right now in this body in this life so this is what the satpurush vision so now we have a satpurush we have a tena satpurush we believe he is my guru then definitely we should follow each and every whether the commands is a great or a small that doesn't matter and we either we understand it a minor names or major that doesn't matter but we have to follow them strictly because agnya is agnya there is nothing like if we do not follow this then it's okay this is not like that we should be cautious just as while uh flying a plane the pilot is remain very very cautious because if he made a smallest mistake then his mistake can be resulted in the death of many people so in the same way if we do not follow or if we make any mistake in following the niyams then we our own self became a killer of our own self in satsang no doubt we physically not remain uh, uh, physically we are remain in satsang but still if we do not follow the niyams then we are like a dead body in this satsang so this is this three attributes is must to achieve and first is to adhere to the niyams prescribed by one sister dev in the previous in the time of sri ji maharaj and later on also there were many devotees happen in this satsang male devotees and female devotees those those devotees who even sacrifice their own lives for following the niyams they have sacrifice their everything like their reputation uh their relations everything for the sake of following the niyams why because they understood the satsang the words of the the words prescribed in the scriptures meaning the words of the scriptures as well as the words of maharaj and mota purus these things are very important than the worldly things or worldly people and that is why they strictly follow maharaj niyam moreover even the satsang is previously as well as present those who have uh, those who have acquired these three attributes they have 
the same kind of qualities like uh, not the regular or common niyam but even they follow the niyams when they took uh, at the beginning of the chaturmas so they follow those niyams strictly for the four months and for this purpose, we should introspect for our own self like maharaj has said not to do this only to do this in the siksha patri how is for me i am following these commands or not or i am following only sometimes and not every time we should think for our own self if we think in this way then we will get our own result our own behavior because we can see everything in front of our eyes whatever the object person everything we can see but we cannot see our own self we can observe the behavior of others but we cannot our own for that we must be remain we must be stand in front of the mirror so we should put a mirror in front of our eyes i'm not talking about the real life mirror but i'm talking about the mirror in the form of sri ji maharaj vachan sri ji maharaj agnya mota purush ne agnya i'm talking about that mirror if we think while doing something like i am watching this in youtube then now maharaj agnya or mota purush ne agnya is this match these two things no then i immediately i should stop this if i am eating something which is not appropriate for a devotee at the time we immediately focus our vision on the mirror in the form of maharaj agnya this is the vartman this is the great agnya like uh it is uh, it, it, it's include in the panchvartman so can i eat this outside food no maharaj would not be become please upon me and when santo and puja guru ji they knew about this how they feel in their heart so i do not do this in this way we should always introspect for our own self then and then we can stop to break the niyams why because we want to attain rajip of maharaj we want to attain our place in his heart and bhagwan is not like an ordinary person who can be pleased by only some uh, like sweet talk to him or like some outer behavior but he watch our heart he watch our thoughts he watch our desires and for that purpose we must be cautious not to break any of the niyams prescribed by maharaj and his ekantik satpurush there are many devotees in past times so once a female devotee whose name was parvati ba and she was a devotee uh, and she was lived in a small village of kokhnes near the ranpur once she went to garuda for the darshan of maharaj and that was the time of chaturma so she took a niyam not to drink anything or not to eat anything before saying jai sonin to someone when someone in return someone say jai swami narayan then and then she eat or drink something so when you uh, the whole time when you she was in her home then for her this is very easy to follow the niyam but once she went to the town of ranpur for purchasing something uh, and while returning she was very thirsty so 
that was the, the, those days there were no any particular way uh, or medium of uh, traveling so people had to walk so while returning she became very thirsty and uh, nearby the road she found a step well she had a uh, new cloth and she had a a small pot so she she had a water pure water and drinkable water in a pot she fetched from the step well but now no one was there so she had a question to whom ask jay swami narayan she waited for time one hour passed two hour passed no one was passing by the step well so now what to do if we, uh, we are there in place of parvati ba then we definitely say jai swami narayan jai swami jai swami and we definitely drink water but parvati ba decided only two hours passed but even though my life i mean uh, there is no life remain in my body then it is very uh, acceptable but it is not acceptable for me to drink water by breaking a niyam and finally that happened she fell down unconscious and sri ji maharaj appeared in front of her in divine form and maharaj uh, asked him why are you not drinking water even though you have a pot of water then she said maharaj i have a niyam and there there was no one here to whom i can say jai swami narayan then maharaj became extremely pleased upon her and maharaj himself said parvati ba don't worry i came uh, i come here to take you to my divine aksardham but before going before taking her soul to the aksardham maharaj uh, someone passed through their road and he was the person was also thirsty and he came that uh, for drinking water from the step well and she found a lady laying on the floor unconscious so she uh, he was looking towards her and he also found maharaj in his divine form amidst the mass of divine light so he asked who are you and why this lady is laying unconscious then maharaj himself explained him everything like this is a parvati ba and she lived in a village of khoknes and she had a niyam not to drink anything or eat anything without uh, saying jai swami to someone and no one is here so even though she had a water she didn't drink anything and now without a water she uh she uh, she had left her body meaning she died and i am his bhagwan i am bhagwan swami narayan so i am coming at the time of her death to bring him to my aksardham bring her soul to my aksardham so uh you should do one thing please go to kokness and inform her relatives that this happened so that they can come here and uh, they perform the final ritual so in this way the devotees they have such kind of caribbee to follow the niyams now come to our own self can we have the same amount of uh dhrdhta to follow maharaj niyam in our life i think we never have the same uh, we, we never in our life will have the same kind of situation but we have to be cautious when we are going outside do not uh eat outside food take something from our own meaning homemade or 
this is only not to eat or drink but each and every commands prescribed in the sikshapatri and uh, vachanamrit and uh, we have took a niyams from santo or puja guruji so this is what we should abide by the niyam second is to have extremely firm faith in god and this is also very very important for us because everything everything in the satsang is based on the nischay meaning faith if we do not have a faith then we only see god as a painting or a statue but we have a faith like this is not a statue or this is not a f- paintings and that is why we believe it as a bhagwan and that's why we are performing worship and dandwat and puja and aarti and everything in front of maharaj in the form of murti if we do not have faith then we do not believe it as a bhagwan just consider the outside people the american people the the those who are non hindu they don't believe like god reside in any murti or something so they don't believe and that's why they don't have a faith so they only understand it as a statue or a paintings nothing else so we must have extremely firm faith maharaj said extremely firm faith meaning once we have decided this is the maharaj and there is no uh, like uh, it is the words of the vachanamrut there is no other god besides this maharaj and there is no other sadhus for me in the entire brahmand so if we have this sentence from in our life then maharaj would be pleased upon us and moreover the main important thing is that our advancement in the satsang is definitely and gradually increased day by day even though we we do not like do any other things or any other endeavor to get some advancement still with the help of this extremely firm faith in the form of bhagwan and in the form of ekantik satpurus these two things are the main like a uh, fuel to our life to our satsang life and that's why we must need this even though we have a good car but we do not have a fuel then we cannot ride in the same way if we have everything we are following niyams we are performing puja we are reading scriptures but if we don't have from faith meaning definitely without from faith we cannot perform the puja we cannot perform uh, or reading the scriptures or we cannot following his names we have faith but in in some adverse circumstances or some situation happen in in the satsang either to our life or in the life of satsang sometimes we might escape this maharaj agnya meaning to keep extremely firm faith in the form of maharaj why i'm talking about ekandik satpurush as well why because in the vachanavrut garuda first 68 maharaj himself said i forever reside in the eight types of murti and in the heart of a sant many of the place in the vachanavrut maharaj himself said the same thing like i forever reside in the heart of a sant so this is what the reason why i am saying not only should keep from faith in maharaj but also in the satpurush why because we have faced something like data in our mind like whenever we see a uh, form of maharaj meaning murti of maharaj then we definitely believe this is maharaj but uh, 
the important thing is that the murti never perform any actions while residing in the murti maharaj even though he said something to us but we have no capacity to listen those divine words from the murti we do not have such a divine vision so that we can we can feel or we can see the murti is performing different actions we have only a worldly vision so that we can only see bhagwan is sitting or bhagwan is standing in the siyasan that is that is all nothing else and that's why maharaj is said in the satpurus to tell us something do you have seen any person or do you ever meet someone to whom maharaj while residing in the murti ask him or tell him not to do this thing or not to do this thing and perform this thing yes so some kind of people those who have attained such a greatness in the satsang meaning in uh, advancement in the satsang they can talk with bhagwan in the, while bhagwan residing in the murti but we don't have that much capacity and that is why we must follow satpurush agnya and we must follow his words as we are following bhagwan's words moreover we should also have the same amount of extreme reform faith just as we have extreme reform faith in the form of bhagwan if we keep this in our heart then maharaj would be pleased upon us and if maharaj become pleased upon us then he himself also reside he himself also reside in our heart definitely in each and every parcel bhagwan is reside but we cannot feel everywhere maharaj is everywhere but we cannot feel him but when maharaj become pleased upon us through the uh, our through our behavior like we follow his each and every niyam as well as we keep from faith in his form as well as in the satpurus then maharaj would be complete upon us and if he be complete upon us then and then we can feel him in our heart as well as we can feel him even in a sihasan meaning in the murti otherwise we only watch him as a standing or sitting in the sihasan nothing else third point is third is to be loyal to those vaisnav devotees who worship one sister dev third one is the loyalty towards the other satsangi and santo bhakto this is also important why because one who has extremely firm faith in the form of maharaj and satpurus that person definitely have a loyalty towards satsang and one who has the loyalty towards satsang he definitely keep a paksh of bhagwan sekantik satpurush meaning santo bhakto meaning he always remain inside of bhagwan there were many duties happen in past as well as in at present time those who have keep from faith as well as a box meaning remain loyal to bhagwan and his santo there were many devotees happen in the past like there was a muslim devotee whose name was kesar mia and when uh, we know the story so i do not want to share the whole story but the main part of his incident meaning when a brahmin who is not a devotee and he even began to speak something uh, uh, ill about bhagwan swami and immediately he struck him with a sword the coward sword so that the person did not uh, will not have some uh, more injury but 
he immediately retaliated with this not only that but even though for that for that action he had to get fired from the job he accepted i do not want to do this. i do not want to do this job but i always remain loyal to my bhagwan this is what the loyalty so in short we should not listen any ill words for our bhagwan and our satpurush for our loyadam that is what our loyalty towards our satsang if someone speak something bad about our maharaj our guruji our santo our bhakto our loyadam parivar then immediately either according to maharaj principle in the vachanamrit either we should leave immediately or we should speak very harsh word to him so that he can never even dare to speak the same thing again this is the loyalty and if we have these three things in our life then maharaj would definitely be complete upon us and if he be complete upon us then he definitely reside in our heart he give us a feelings maharaj is always within our heart but we cannot feel him and for that purpose we require these three attributes and then and then we can be said as a stone's duty according to maharaj vision next now this is what stone satsangi and now we are going to learn something about uh, who is the great satsangi meaning the taste of the great satsangi e a first if he is a householder he would surrender everything he has for god and his duties and if he required to do so would even give his life for satsang so this is the first point we definitely sometimes we our own uh, we in our own thought we are thinking like i am understanding everything in the satsang i have firm faith in bhagwan and satpurus i am following each and every niyams and also i am keeping i am ready to keep box meaning i am ready to remain loyal towards bhagwan and santo but and while thinking this we understand our own self as a great devotee in satsang even more i uh, we think in our heart like everyone should respect me as a great devotee this is the problem we have nothing while following this three points maharaj had described meaning uh following niyam keeping from faith and becoming loyal these three attributes are must for each and every person who is in this satsang so we must keep those three attributes in our life that is not the qualities of a great devotee great devotee great devotee's qualities are totally different and this is described here for householder <clears throat> they always surrender everything for bhagwan and even if some uh, require would give his own life for satsang we do not think like uh, any uh, anyone has to give his life for satsang but we should be ready for that 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 kind of feeling in remain in our heart that is the attributes of a great devotee so we should introspect for ourselves like whether i have this quality in me or not if not then i need to acquire through the sant samagam second the moment he is to the commands him to become a paramhans meaning a sadhu would immediately become a paramhans 
so this is not only to follow his names this is more than that the story of sundar ji sutar will uh, uh, also in this you are super course you will read and in the story of sundar ji sutar he became immediately sadhu when he was on traveling he was uh, for his particular job for the marriage of the prince he was the leader of the party still when maharaj commanded him to become a sadhu immediately without thinking anything he became a sadhu again when maharaj asked him now you are a das so now it is my command go back to your home immediately he accepted that agni also so this is the quality of great satsangi third one is arinanciant this is for our arinanciant who despite encountering wealth and women in his travels to other region remains unaffected and continues to formally adhere to all of his names is considered the greatest among all arinanciants so while traveling one place to another meaning when we are as a sadhu remain in mandir then it's okay because there is some restriction or some uh, specific uh, facility to follow our names very easily we do not need to be cautious or we do not need to perform any special arrangement or something but while not in a mandir we are in traveling meaning in vichran at other places where the mandir like facilities are not available at the time we should follow each and every rules and regulations for us then and then mara said that renunciant is great greatest among all we knew the story of uji guru ji's life while he was uh, he had uh, uh, he was in a hospital in uk in east london and he had a heart attack at the time all three veins were blocked doctor suggested to perform bypass surgery in 1994 i'm talking about that and puja guru ji denied why because no like uh, some kind of facilities are not uh possible there for our sadhus not only that but for resting for some treatment he was kept in a hospital puja guru ji uh he had to stay there because no other options but puja guru ji made a condition i only stay here in a hospital if no female nurse enter in this room it is not uh, not a talk of touching or conversing but even entering the room and once puja guru ji was laying on a bed and like uh, everything is joined to him like uh, iv meaning bottle is running medicine going inside her inside inside his body and uh the ecg meter continuously taking a cardiogram so everything like wires and everything are uh, connected to his body in such a situation puja guru ji was laying on bed and by mistake one female nurse enter into the room and immediately she found like she was wrong place immediately she came out but what was the next scene the devotees and the other santos they were little far from the room immediately puja guru ji also went out of the room with the bottles and the ecg wires and everything puja guru ji immediately uh immediately ran out of the room and he he 
ask all the devotees, I do not want to stay here even for a moment. Please take me to the mandir. I do not want to stay here in hospital. So this is what, according to Sriji Maharaj's words, like in adverse situation, when is not in a mandir, meaning in a travels, in other region, that was not the India, that was the UK. So even though such situation happened, but he always focused on the words of Maharaj. He always focused on the names given by Maharaj himself for, for the sadhus. And that is why he remained either, firmly either, to follow Maharaj's name. And that is why we should consider him, everyone should consider him as the greatest amongst all renunciants. Next, now this is what Maharaj says in the Vachanabrat, but in the Vachanabrat, Maharaj also says we should also keep uh, we should also keep one thing in our mind, like uh, now uh, the previously in previous slide Maharaj described three attributes of a great devotee, the taste of the great devotees. So, if we consider that great devotee, so it is not mean like uh, we should not re give respect to any uh, anyone, someone who is like uh, uh, who is great in the worldly worldly manner. If someone who is respected, who is reputed in the public, in the society, we should also give him respect. This is what the Vivek. And that's why in the Vachanavrata Maharaj says, if a sensuous person considered to be reputable in society comes to an assembly, then he should be respected accordingly. If an, like Mr. Mayor or someone who is like reputed in the society, he come to our mandir, our assembly, then we definitely take care of him. Like we should, uh, we should reserve a special seat in front row in the assembly. Sometimes we should sit, uh, sit him on the stage. We should offer him a garland, meaning we should welcome him. In this way, we should pay all kind of respect he is worthy of. This is the way. If we do not follow this, then what happened? This is also described in the Vachanabrut. Conversely, if these rules are not followed, consequences can be detrimental. What happened in the past? A Rishi happened to be in Samadhi to the king, uh, so the king was not honored. As a result, king became very angry and threw a dead snake around the Rishi's neck. This is the Katha of the Mahabharat, after Mahabharat war. When no one Pandavas remain alive, meaning everyone they uh, left the kingdom and they went for the jungle for their remaining life. And King Parikshit, a grandson of Arjun, he was he was the king, and he was also very pious. But once he went to the jungle for hut. Uh, so at that time, he he was uh, he was in he, he became very th thirsty. So in search of water, he was uh, searching for someone who is living in the jungle. So at that time, we know in ancient time, Rusis they were living in the jungle. So he found some uh, little hut. So king, while thinking in in his mind, like I will get uh, water. So when he entered the ashram, but unfortunately Rishi was performing a meditation. His eyes closed. So even though he waited for some time, he once knocked the door, he asked something, but Rishi, he was like in meditation, so he didn't listen anything. 
and the king became very angry i am a king why he is not looking at me i am standing here for some time i am thirsty why he is not asking me even for sitting or giving me water or something then a dead snake was there in nearby he immediately took that and put it ra- around rishi's neck but rishi was in meditation he was in samadhi he didn't uh, feel anything what had happened outside so after some time the king left the hut left the ashram and then rishi's son he came there and he found a dead snake around his father's neck so he thought who did this later on the rishi's son calls the king meaning those who are considered to be respectable in society and worldly affairs should in no way be insulted in in an assembly if they are dishonor it will definitely lead to problems and create hindrances in worship for this reason then all satsangi householders and renunciants should firmly abide by this principle of mind so this is sri ji maharaj agnya for us to give respect those who is respectable and uh, like call great in the society and worldly affairs next there is swamini vat a one who performs a yagna and riding a horse throughout the world would be very difficult since if someone captures the horse the yagna would remain incomplete while another who rides the horse in the compound completes the yagna the meaning of this is controlling the indriyas antakaran is like riding the horse throughout the world also imbibing the 64 qualities of a sadhu is like riding the horse throughout the world but to attach meaning associate with a sadhu who has the 64 qualities is convenient like riding the horse in the compound so in this path swami says us he give us very easiest way to acquire everything in our life meaning all kind of attributes to our life there is very difficult uh, ways to attain those qualities in our life which is described in the scriptures but just as it, it is said like 64 qualities of a sadhu this is described in the satsangi jivan and if we wanted to attain all of those qualities in our life it is very very difficult we have to perform uh, too much endeavors for that but if we attach our own self meaning we associate through mind word and deed to the ekandik satpurush who has acquired these 64 qualities in his life then we definitely give the same result meaning gain same fruit what he'll attain the same thing we will attain meaning we also acquire those qualities and if we do not acquire those qualities still according to the vachanamrut 10th of sarangpur sri ji mara said the same amount of attainment happen to the someone who remain in the company of such a kandik sat meaning the sant attain the divine bara fakshardam someone meaning mumukshu who remain meaning who remain in his association also will get the same destination meaning the akshardham so this is what gunadan swami nivato now there is a story of sundarji sutar uh, there is pdf course material you will get in your email and you you can read the story your own self and learn the attributes those who had the sun uh, those attributes sundar ji sutar had like uh in the vachanamrut we we read like uh when maharaj says meaning ishta dev once ishta dev give commands you become a paramhans immediately become paramhans that was the main quality of sundar ji sutar so now while listening this story of sundar ji sutar we should also cultivate the same quality meaning same 
uh, amount of eagerness to follow bhagwan's agnya that is nothing so in uh, through this sabha we should uh, try and we should pray to bhagwan and puja guru ji like uh, always we abide by your niyams always we have from faith in your lives and always we should remain loyal to you these three qualities as well as the qualities of our great devotees as well as what gunadan swami says uh, everything should be in our life and for that we should pray to you by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganshyam maharaj ni jai shri patim shri dharam sarva devishwaram bhakti dar matmajam vasudevam harim madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje ganshyam maharaj ni jai